Good evening and welcome to this edition of News Night. My name is Charles Odongso and with me in the studio is old man of the clan, Andrew Mwenda. He is the CEO of the Independent News Magazine. Andrew, you're most welcome back. Thank you. The new week. What is new in the week in business, Let's politics? Let's go to our business. What is new in business? I don't know. You don't know? Yes. Good. We are back to the issue of police mm. and this thing of Jacqueline Babazi. There is something that ran out in one of the papers and in the weekly observer. In the you, weekly observer. In the, in the observer newspaper of Monday. Right. What is 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 Kaihura now doing? Let's start it from there. Is Kaihura doing full time political job? Uh, first of all, as we discussed last week, yes. I told you that the Kale Kaihura is a member of the NRM. He came with the NRM from the bush. And he was socialized in the NRM. So although technically he's the inspector general of police, you cannot say that he is independent of the political interests of the NRM and of President Yoram Museveni. So the, the, the institutionalization of his role in the police has not yet taken place. And one of the reasons why Kaihura has been successful is precisely because President Yoram Museveni looks at him as a person, a cadre. as a cadre, where he not a cadre. Either the police would be ignored and, and resourced, or it would be irrelevant. Okay, let's look now at that specific interview. You know, it was a leakage of, you know, an interview that was supposed to be, you know, confidential, but then it gets released to the media, to the observer. Uh, but that, and it, that also, Charles, is not true. First of all, I should tell you that... Because the person, I'm, I'm told there is someone who has been arrested within his office for leaking yes, that information. but let me tell you this. Uh, what is new? You see, what happened is, Kale Kaihura was getting these youth who were accused or alleged to be mobilizing for Amama Mbabazi and the police was interrogating them in a case the police is building against Jacqueline. And it does it personally. And this information has already been shared by the police to the DPP mm. for purposes of prosecution. I am reliably informed President Yoram Seven last week mm. called Kale Kaihura and said no, don't, the police were, were going to summon Jacqueline Mbabazi for cross-examination. Mm. This was last week. With the view of taking her to court and charging her. This was last With week. With bribery, yes, last week. But the president, when he was in Brussels last week, mm. he called Kale from a reliable source and said, no, don't prosecute Jacqueline for political reasons. It may be politically sensitive for you to proceed. But let me tell you this about this uh, huge hype about the leak. Mm. This is how the leak came about. The police, having done these investigations mm. and accumulated all these uh, Evidence, transcripts, yeah. They put them together and took the matter to the DPP so that DPP can prefer charges against Jacqueline. Mm. Now, if Kale has arrested somebody within his office for the leakage of these documents, he would also need to arrest somebody at least at the DPP's office. So it is possible that the Jacqueline Nibaba has got this information from either the DPP's office or within the police. But these documents are soon are going to be open because they are part of the police evidence against Jacqueline Nibaba if in future there is to be a case, a criminal case against Jacqueline. So when on uh, Facebook people are saying that there is some leaked document, they presented it as if mm. Jacqueline sent somebody to the police headquarters who recorded the Kale Kaihura. Actually, that is what Jacqueline is said to have said. Yes, but it's it wrong. It's it not is, true. It is not true that Jacqueline recorded, sent, somebody sent someone to record who Kaihura. recorded, no. Because the guy, mm. the, the contact, he's called, I think, uh, Ruzindana from Kayunga, that apparently he says that he had been that kaihura has within his own office people who are spying on him and they report back to the <laughs> yes Japanese. but you see when things go on facebook and uh, people want to tilt the story to favor their desires hopes and the um, aspirations the truth of the matter mm. is that these uh, transcripts i told you that they have very many you of had transcripts. some of them which you very I, many I, I have been reading to try and find it but you are not releasing them why be, not because i should tell you as a journalist i always look at f whether what i'm going to publish is going to prejudice a case going to endanger national security or do other things do you see the people who give them to me also give them to me in confidence if i publish them i also was thinking about will i not be exposing who was talking to who but since now the police has submitted them to the dpp I'm going to uh, begin serializing these transcripts. But the essence is this. The police was building a case against Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. So it is not true that Jacqueline had informers in the police who were recording these messages. Okay. If she has any informers, they simply stole police official police transcripts. Okay, let's go to the issue. Now that Some is a fact. That's not opinion. That's fact. 
this interview, I can bring you the, the transcript I have, which I got from the police, done by the police, and these transcripts are on Facebook. They're identical. Now, in that interview, there is mention of some senior army officers, a general, another person who is a former CMI boss. It is in the interview. What do you, who are these that is, are not being mentioned? Well, there was suspicion that uh, there is Aronda Nyakairma, Yes. as the general who is being talked about, and uh, uh, James Mujira as a former boss of uh, CMI, and I can tell you. So these are all people oh, on Baba's side? Uh, no, 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 no. I can't. What? I Allegedly. know, I know James Mujira very well. Mm. He would be as far from Amam and Baba's side as the sun is from this planet. So that could not be true. And even if the informers provided that information, it would be false. But perhaps what we should, what do we learn mm. from these transcripts? You see, you need to understand the success of Kale as an inspector general of police. Most people, especially in the opposition and the civil society, think that Kale's effectiveness in clamping down on demonstrations has largely been due to him sending riot police on the streets to break down rallies. Yes. We shall be discussing that as well. But that's what I'm coming to. Mm. What this shows you, and for a person like me who has deep tentacles inside the police force and able to get the best intelligence any Ugandan can get. Even in the state house. I tell you, me and, the, and President M7, I think, would compete on fair, good ground on uh, terms of uh, the penetration of intelligence information we get. Because some of the that reports... That caused you trouble some time ago, so don't go too far yes, with it. Uh, but I can tell keep, you keep that the there issue, are some yeah. security reports from ESO, ESO, which I read, or CMI, which I read before he has read. Anyhow, without me boasting too much, let me put it this way. You see, what Kale has done, he has been able to build an effective intelligence arm of the police. Mm. This intelligence arm has penetrated youth groups here in Kampala mm. so deeply that if Besija is planning a demonstration on Lukwago, the police already know. Out of every one demonstration that takes place open and you see police battling people on the streets, nine have been nipped in the bud. Okay. Th let me come to the second point because you're coming to the mama thing. Mm. What it also shows you is that Kale Kaihura, through that police intelligence arm, has been able to effectively penetrate the organizational infrastructure that Tamama was putting in place both perceived and actual. Mm. To the degree that if Mbabazi had 50, Kaihura has penetrated 200, more than what Mbabazi could have had. Mm. And, and, and that means that really in the battle between seven and Mbabazi inside the NRM, Kaihura has given him seven a decisive advantage. In other words, the police is not acting independent of the political conflict between the president and the prime minister. The I don't want us to miss two things. Mm. One, before we finish this discussion, one is where does Kale get the money to utilize in this that looks like more political than policy. And then two, yes. mm. there is Can a Can I answer that and you answer the other yes, question? Because quickly, we yeah. forget it. Yeah. You see, this is the funny thing I, uh, for me to tell you. Kale actually does not have money for intelligence work. And uh, I can bet my left arm on it. 70% or 80% of Kale's informers on these matters of a mama do voluntary work. In fact, I know that there are negotiations say we, they must build, they must... The but finance. this Sabina guy was given one million. He ordered in the transcript, he ordered that Nani, he was calling the person, the contact, Nani, Nani, get for me one million shillings and give to this guy and get another three million. Where does he get that money? So I was, I was simply telling you that 80%, 70 to 80% of Kali's intelligence arm, this intelligence he gets is out of what you would call, in intelligence you would call it popular vigilance. You know intelligence has two elements. You have professional intelligence where professional intelligence officers go and gather information. Mm -hmm. Once they have gathered that information, they take it to analysis. Analysis gives it over to the chief. Mm -hmm. But because Kale comes from a tradition of armed warfare, armed struggle in the bush, mm -hmm. him and M7 rely on intelligence as popular vigilance. You have people who are friends or supporters who come and volunteer information to you. M many times that information is not properly analyzed and synthesized. So Kale, Kale, you find him getting raw intelligence. As you see in those transcripts, he's getting raw intelligence. But normally, a police chief should receive intelligence that has been received, taken to the analysis department, analyzed thoroughly, synthesized, and then he gets a, a ready-made product or a product that is ready for eating. Now, many times, M7 is fed on raw intelligence. Another so one that I question. wanted to ask you is, mm. in terms of, there is a report today in the Daily Monitor, mm. the headline, that murder cases, defilement cases are mm. on the rise. These are mm. all capital offenses. Mm. Does this have a link with the fact that now Kale and his team are more hell-bent on doing political work, you know, regime survival, than actual policing to keep law and order. Is there, is there a link in your view? It, it, it could be possible. 
if Kale, is in that if, the chief of the country. if the chief of police is very busy uh, struggling to uh, penetrate uh, FDC youth mobilizers and the NRM youth mobilizers, there must be part of his attention that is shifted away from the mainstream policing work. But let me tell you this, there is also a dividend to it because penetrating youth groups here may be much more important, not just for regime survival, even for security, because you have seen what is happening in Ukraine. All of a sudden, even other parts of Ukraine have become ungovernable. You have seen what has happened in Egypt or Libya. So it is possible One that time if, in the UK as well. yes, if you slept and the, and these youth organized in town, you can have the government, not just government overthrown, but you can have complete anarchy and the, uh, the ability to the state control security in the city. How do you think police should handle this going forward? The politics, security, you know, real law and order. When I was younger, hmm. when I was younger, I was much of a preacher. Now that I've grown old, I'm an analyst. So I think that uh, rather than tell you what police should do, I will tell you what police is likely to do. Mm -hmm. Police under Kale Kehora is more likely to be concerned about the threats to the security of the state and the pre and President Yoram Seveni more than uh, defilement. Well, thank you so much. It can't be any better than that. That is Andrew Mwenda, old man of the clan. And this was Newsnight. I hand you back to the news.